It's a weird sensation to be both hyped and disheartened at the prospect of having to review a video game, but that's what I get here. The first in the Aretha trilogy was one of the most intriguing RPGs so far. It was close to a work of art, but one that had a really high language barrier, to the point where I nearly couldn't review the game properly. It was exhausting to translate, but honestly resulted in an incredibly enriching experience overall. We rejoin Materia on her 18th birthday as she returns to her homeland, Aretha, to find her friend Duel, so she can invite her to her birthday party. Upon coming home, she finds that it has changed somewhat. Howard was defeated in the first game, and Sybil and Emilita have succeeded the throne. But from the shadows, the evil mage Warwick has stolen the magical item Aretha – seriously, you couldn't have picked a different name – that can freely alter the terrain of the Aretha world. You can expect certain things in these games, one of which is the necessary work to put in before you're ready to embark on your quest. Apparently, Materia forgot all of her skills and lost all of her equipment in the years between the two stories. Again, the grind isn't too bad. Once you get to a certain level, the enemies realise they'll get owned and just won't attack you. It's a good indication of where you're at, while also keeping the game non-cheesable. You level up quickly and your HP replenishes each time you do. Buy the expensive sword, sure, it takes up the majority of your money, but with it, you can much more easily smash the weak first area enemies. Note that defeating enemies doesn't give you a reward straight up. They'll typically drop a chest, which you have to decide to open or not. Of course, you're going to. These have money or items in most of the time, but every now and then another monster will jump out of it. Blinded and disoriented, supposedly, and you'll be flung into another battle. Sometimes you'll find a magical capsule inside, which can hold pretty much any consumable in the game. You could find a really high-end potion that could get you out of a bind, or use it towards the end of a dungeon only to get teleported away. There are three slots in your party, and two of them are filled almost straight away by Materia and Duel. The third of the trio sees various characters swap in and out as the game goes on. One of the cooler features of the original game was the party talk function. You can now access this at basically any time by pressing start. And seeing as how this is a more companionable adventure than the largely solo affair from before, this will be both useful and charming. The rest of your menuing is accessed via the select button and is reasonably efficient to use. You choose your weapons, armour and so on from the list, pressing A on it to bring up a use message, then that's the one you're using. A lot simpler than having to transfer an item to a party member and then having to figure out how to equip it. Every step saved is a little less translation energy expended, so I'm thankful. The battle system is standard turn-based stuff. Select an enemy, then a weapon, and so on. But the animation and sound effects have some real heft to them, and the monster sprites are excellently drawn. The presentation, as before, is absolutely impeccable. Heck, it's better, if anything. Some of the scenery and stills, especially in the home city, are reused, but they were superb in the first place, so I don't really have a problem with it. A stunning looking game and a cracking soundtrack to go with it. One thing that stands out compared to the original, however, is how slow your character moves. It's like she's sleepwalking a lot of the time. You can now move diagonally though, and it's not locked into the grid. Think Link's Awakening, but at half the speed. Don't worry though, press select and choose the bottom most option. This is your settings menu, and you'll see two options related to speed. The top one affects the text boxes, but the bottom affects Materia's movement speed. An oddball thing to find in a system menu, but there it is. Aretha 2 is every bit as accomplished as the first game in the series. Without hyperbole, I will say it's one of the greatest looking games on the whole system, and I don't write that easily. I would recommend you at least try to keep up with the storyline as it adds so much, but ultimately you'll still get something out of the game should you not be able to. It blows my mind that A. Yanaman didn't do more stuff like this, and B. There has never been any Western release of this trilogy. An absolute crime, if you ask me.
Thanks so much for watching this video. Let me know your thoughts on the game down below, and if you can spare a second, give the review a quick thumbs up, it really helps out. Subscribe to the Portable Power Podcast for a new Game Boy review every day from Monday to Friday. Or, alternately, new episodes of the podcast drop every Saturday and Sunday on whichever platform you get your pods. See you later on.